Morning everybody, Andy here again, day 28. First things first, the daily figures down below. Getting a little bit better, you know. Um, well, no death's good, is it? But uh, daily uh, deaths yesterday, 449. And that's a couple of days now where it's, it's been gained. And that's actually the lowest total we've had now for a couple of weeks. Yes, there is that always a lag after the weekend with the announcements of deaths and why they collate the figures, as I've said before. But hopefully, you know, I think there are tentative signs that maybe things are going in the right direction. Still a long way to go yet and uh, as we've learned I saw something yesterday about Japan having problems they started coming out of out of this reducing their restrictions and they've gone back up with a big spike now so that's a lesson to be learned for anybody else who's doing that or thinking about doing it the total number of deaths 16,509 as we stand at the moment the album yesterday 1977 back to the punk years never mind the bollocks is <laughs> the sex pistols by the sex pistols yeah, because um what I'm going to talk about today is actually to do with radio because the re one of the reasons that I listen to that particular album as much as I like the album and I still stands up today there's a couple of tracks that aren't maybe quite as good as they used to sound back in the day but it's still such a powerful album for all the reasons that you can imagine but um, I'm involved with sort of local radio have been for about 25 years now one way or another and I've been DJing on local radio for about I think it's about 18 years something like that now and um, we've got a broadcast come up which I will talk about in another um, uh, particular video on another day so I won't bore you with all of that right at the moment but I'm in, in part of that I'm actually doing a two-part series of uh, shows all about the punk and new wave time of sort of mid 70s to you know 60, 76 77 78 probably around maybe 79 if you're lucky um, but Yesterday, uh, unfortunately, someone died who was very influential. And if, if it hadn't been for him, actually, I probably wouldn't be doing those shows now because the, the radio station I'm involved with, Hastings Rock, would not exist. A man was a, name by, a guy by the name of Ronan O'Reilly who died sadly yesterday, age 79, after a long illness. I don't think it was uh, COVID-19 related, but, you know, um, ultimately, unfortunately, he isn't here anymore, but a very influential person, actually one of those people who revolutionised life, certainly here in the UK, more than people realise, I think, because a very interesting character <laughs> with a colourful past, shall we say, but in 1964, he started... Uh, a radio station called Radio Caroline. Now, a lot of people go, oh, I've heard of that, because it, was, it wasn't the only uh, pirate radio station, but it's certainly the most famous radio station, pirate radio station here in the UK, probably known across the world. Um, and why did he start that particular station? Partly because he was a bit of a record plugger and he couldn't get other stations to play his music, apparently, because there was already a station called Radio Luxembourg, which broadcast out of Luxembourg. Um, and I remember listening to that myself, not back in 1964, but I remember listening to it myself. But here in the UK, radio was a really strange thing back in back in those early 60s days. We didn't have the BBC controlled everything. There was nothing else. And there was the light programme, the third programme and the home programme, I think. Very much speech based radio. Um, not a lot of music on there. They used to operate this system called Needle Time. Um, and what that meant was that that was the amount of time that the needle stayed on the record, if you see, see what I mean, the amount of music that they actually played during an hour. And it wasn't that much. Most of the time it's taken up with DJs or, or presenters. They weren't really DJs. Um, just talking about things generally. Um, and, and the amount of music was very minimal. And as for what was becoming popular music, because 1964, the Beatles were in full flow, you know, the Rolling Stones, that whole thing was, you know, we've had rock and roll in the States and uh, the swinging 60s was just about to start or you know the, the, the shoots of that if you want to put it that way um, and it wasn't really anything it was about half an hour of popular music played on uh, whatever it was the home pro the light pro I can't remember which one it was so uh, Ronan O'Reilly and others decided to set up something else what became known as pirate radio and Radio Caroline was a ship basically or two ships as it happened in the end uh, moored off the coast of Essex in international waters in the North Sea, and the DJs used to present from them. And what they did is they just played music for more or less 24 hours a day. And the more that the albums came in, um, they played album music, what became adult orientated rock, I suppose, but became classic rock. They played that, whereas other stations, especially in the UK, were not catering for that. And and so they were they were pirates. They were revolutionaries, and and um, and also they created a whole new. Well, disc jockeys, really, because, I mean, I know you had those in America, certainly completely different system over there. 
uh, far more open from what I can make out. So you didn't really need pirate radio in that respect. But over here we certainly did because it created those characters as well, DJs that went on to do other things and that were presenting the music. They loved the music. That was the other thing. They were playing the music that they loved. Um, it got under the skin of the government so much that they actually produced this Marine Offences Act in 1967, which made those stations illegal or it made it pretty much illegal for people to listen to them, which, which is a bit of a strange thing apparently even radio luxembourg you know if you listen to it um, it was illegal to listen to it how you police that i don't know but it shook it all up in the end because in 1967 the bbc decided to start their own programs and what became radio one radio two as well playing playing more music and what they did was to take a lot of the djs that have been on the ships because they used to live on the ships out in the sea you know and little ferries or little boats going backwards and forwards supplying them there's a film actually very much a fictionalised account called The Boat That Rocked with, I think it's Philip Seymour Hoffman playing an American, very loosely based on Emperor Roscoe, one of the DJs that was on Radio Caroline. It's a good film. Yeah, it's an interesting film. It does give it a flavour, I suppose, of what it was like. And it was dangerous, if you can imagine. The North Sea is not the most hospitable of places to be. <laughs> um, so, But then that made the, the BBC start that what they were doing, and then they started bringing in the DJs, people like with Tony Blackburn from over here, here, Johnny Walker, um, oh, there were loads of them, Simon D was another one, John Peel eventually came over and started doing things, but still that type of music, the, the rock music if you wanted, the album type of music, you know, the Hendrixes and Dylans and even the Beatles to a large extent, the Stones, etc, etc, was still only played a lot of the time at night, um, whereas Radio Carolina and the other stations were playing this music all the time and because they loved it they influenced a lot of people i know i listened to it back in the day a lot it influenced my taste in music and obviously it started off a load of different stations people like the station that i'm involved with here some of the djs on it um worshipped ronan o'reilly and radio caroline some of them worked on the ship where you actually were pirate radio djs themselves which gave them the idea for starting up their own station here in hastings and i know that's happened in other parts of the country as well two of our djs still broadcast on radio caroline now albeit not on a ship as a, a proper <laughs> legal radio station. In fact, Ray was on, on air last night, actually, on Radio Caroline. Um, the reason I'm mentioning this, because radio listening has gone up so much over the past you know few weeks because of what's happening now. People are doing things differently. Um, radio is a sense of comfort. It's, you know, it's a, a friendly voice in that corner, a bit like I've talked about these videos. You just turn the radio on and you've got personalities. You've got people, a lot of them, not all of them, <laughs> who care about the music that they're playing. They speak with authority they speak with passion and, and they, they come across as nice people those stations are still out there and obviously there are stations now right across the world and especially in this country a lot of them have been influenced by people like Ronan O'Reilly revolutionaries and it's funny I was thinking of the, the sort of connections because Radio Caroline it had its problems it was obviously cost a lot of money to run those ships and all that, that that sort of thing at the time and they were actually bailed out a couple of times by George Harrison apparently from the Beatles who revolutionised popular music. Strangely enough, I'm reading, as I mentioned the other day, Michael Palin's diaries, the second uh, book of volume of his diaries. And at the moment, in 1980, he's talking about all the films that they were making. They'd just done Life of Brian, going on to make Meaning of Life, with George Harrison as the producer. <laughs> he was putting a lot of money into what became handmade films at the time. And... Michael Palin, the Monty Python people, revolutionised uh, comedy in this country and across the world as well, if you want to put it that way. And then, strangely enough, maybe it was subconsciously, I put on the Sex Pistols album yesterday, a band that revolutionised music in the mid-70s. There's a lot of revolution that's gone on that maybe you don't always realise. And those little connections are quite interesting. And, and purely coincidentally, I put this T-shirt on this morning without even thinking about it, the Beatles, George Harrison's in there, you know. Um, revolution could be a good thing. We all need a good kick up the arse sometimes, establishment, <laughs> authoritarian sort of uh, ideas and things, the BBC or whatever it is. Uh, we need that sometimes. And actually, 
maybe this is one of those occasions. Who knows what's going to come out of this? There could be some revolutionary ideas that come out. All oh, things have already happened that have revolutionised the way that things have been done over here in the UK. And I know they're talking about other things in other countries as well. So there's your thought for the day. I will come back to the radio. I think sorry, it's gone off on a bit of a tangent, but you know, I just wanted to pay tribute to the man who who changed so many people's lives, changed radio certainly and music possibly um, in this country because without those stations, a lot of the bands would never have got the airplay. Those bands that you now listen to all the time they're in those over there a lot of those cds are over there by those bands who were played on radio caroline and probably only lasted because they were played on the station like radio caroline and as i said if it wasn't for them i wouldn't be doing radio programs myself now anyway i'll speak to you so stay safe stay strong and uh, stay at home as they keep saying and i'll speak to you tomorrow hopefully goodbye <laughs>